We now know who will be the, the main running mate for Atiko Bubakar in the 2023 presidential election. What will Governor Ifan Yokoa bring to the Atiku presidential campaign? And the fixtures for the forthcoming English Premier League season are out. Sports journalist Monday Thomas joins us to analyze the prospects for the new season. Plus, we have in-depth analysis of today's newspaper headlines. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Friday morning. We're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria, Allen Lagos. My name is Kofi Bertel. So we'll start off with a look at trending stories making the rounds in Nigeria uh, today and, of course, yesterday as well. Um, social media space has been a buzz with um, news of the independent people of Biafra and naming the alleged kidnappers who have been uh, perpetrating evil and harm carnage in the southeastern part of Nigeria. Indeed, uh, the IPOB have been uh, the prime attack or the prime recipient of attacks uh, from the public and suspicion from the public as far as these uh, kidnappings have been concerned. Don't forget, recently, the prelate of Methodist Church in Nigeria, His Eminence Dr. Samuel Kaluuchi, had uh, regain his freedom from the den of kidnappers after parting with a handsome amount of 100 million naira. Well, uh, IPOB is warning criminal elements to desist from using its name to commit crimes in the southeast. Uh, uh, the group's the secessionist group that dissociated itself, dissociated itself from the criminals, saying it had never been part or behind the ongoing insecurity and criminality in that part of the country. Now, to release a statement signed by their spokesperson, or what is called Publicity Secretary, um, saying that IPOB formed and inaugurated the ESN, that is, the Eastern Security Network, to checkmate terrorist activities in the region and to never get involved in evil acts, uh, such as the kidnapping for ransom. Of course, it also said it's working uh, towards exposing to the public those behind the ongoing criminality in Anambra, Enugu, and Imo states uh, is a quite a, a very sad situation. Um, really, really sad because quite a number of people from the southeast indigents of that place cannot return to their villages uh, without thinking about whether they are safe. We've had people who are from out of the southeast and, uh, you know, indigents of the southeast uh, as victims of the killing, uh, the attacks, the robbing, the kidnapping for ransom that is ongoing there. Uh, it's well documented those uh, who uh, Dr. Samuel Kalu Uche, prelate of Methodist Church in Nigeria, um, said were behind his kidnapping, that were responsible for his kidnapping. He uh, claimed that those were Fulani um, herdsmen who, who did that. Um, there have been reactions to this, of course, uh, the federal government, uh, the Niger police force and the military have not really told us what has been the result of their investigation. Uh, the soldiers around the area who had mounted a checkpoint were also accused by the prelate of uh, being complicit in his kidnapping. The operations of these kidnappers there, um, the Nigerian military came out to say, or the Nigerian army came out to deny this and said they will be meeting with the prelate to question him so they can find out some more about his claims. Well. IPOB has said before this isn't the first time they've denied being behind uh, the criminality in the southeast. Uh, all this started with the IPOB agitation uh, and the confrontation of their members with the Nigerian army and then the formation of this group, the Eastern Security Network, pictures emanating on social media uh, of uh, young men dressed in black uh, and red barrettes, uh, black uh, dress or clothes and clothing and red barrettes uh, holding um, um, you know, guns. And um, it went on yeah, to uh, metamorphose into uh, something that uh, some people were not sure whether uh, they could um, trust. We began to hear reports of uh, enforcement of Monday sit at home in states in the south, five states in the southeast, and people were not free to move around if they didn't want to observe the sit at home strike or the sit at home uh, order by the IPOB. This was all in protest uh, to what was going on there, especially the arrest detention and trial of their leader, uh, Maze Namde Kano. Uh, so this enforcement of the Monday sit at home began to get a bit more violent. Some people were attacked, some were beaten, uh, some lost their lives. And so the suspicion was that IPOB was doing that uh, to make sure people 
obeyed their directive to stay at home in the entire southeast on Mondays. Well, they've moved on from that to outright killings, you know, kidnappings. I mean, one of the most uh, uh, you know, publicized one was the killing of the, the husband of the late uh, Professor Dora Akunili. Uh, it was really sad when the videos went around the internet with his head, uh, I'm sorry to say, blown off. Um, and that really was a worrying one. Well, uh, the group has said before, and they are saying now that they're not behind the killings or kidnappings, uh, the criminality in the Southeast. Um, they'd previously asked the Nigerian army to go after uh, those who are responsible for criminal activities in the Southeast. Well, time will tell uh, if anything will come out of the status statement by the indigenous people of Biafra. All right, moving on. Um, a stingy man cannot be a president. It's better for an old, generous man to be president than for a young, stingy man to be Nigeria's president. Those are the words of Reverend Father A.G.K. Mbaka, who is um, the head of the Adoration Ministry right there in Enugu. Um, this isn't the first time Reverend Father Mbaka has had to say some things about um, uh, from an Anambra State Governor, Peter Obi. But before we talk some more about this, let's do a flashback and listen to what he said. Some social media videos uh, emanated from his speech. <laughs> It means you don't want to do anything for God. Okay, come to know your weather. My name here, a political statement. What about my mother? A political statement. Oh, you have not seen my name, my brother, my people. I have never promised things and failed. I'm a fundamental Catholic. Even when I'm good, no kind of me. What am I got? You can help me say, Mary and Anambra. Praise the Lord. In your capacity and what God has done for you, Governor. Get money, okay, get money, get into what's in here and I call here. God hates stinginess. I am the one, I'm a quick author, go to. I'm a quick here, guys, again, though. Otherwise, again, I think we fail. Well, well, the first um, clip you saw was a uh, uh, amateur footage social media video put out by someone who was at the adoration grounds when uh, Father Mbaka uh, said those words. Uh, he said that this hunger uh, that is disturbing people, and you said you want him, the him referring to uh, Peter Obi, he says a stingy man that cannot give his people money uh, you want to die of hunger? Are you people mad? Where is the Holy Spirit? And they said, he asked him, do you want to die of hunger? They said, no. You know, are you not already suffering in the country today? They said, yes. Now, this is what you can see right here. The second part of what we played uh, was uh, footage of from the Adoration Ministry videos uh, that they put up. This is December 2000. That was December 2018. This one right here. Where um, a father, uh, <laughs> where uh, former governor Peter Obi, uh, who was the running mate to Atiku Abubakar ahead of the tw in the 2019 general elections, paid a visit to the ground um, to greet the father and uh, his people and to attend the bazaar. He was invited to the bazaar to give a speech and, of course, probably use that as a way to garner support for himself and Atiku uh, as well as the People's Democratic Party. Uh, father Mbaka asked uh, Peter Obi to make a donation. Uh, as that far as that bazaar was concerned because they had a project, a church project going on and needed money, funds uh, to complete that project. 
But uh, Peter B insisted that he would um, reach out to the father later. Uh, he wouldn't be making that donation immediately. And the father said, you know what, you have to uh, make the donation now. Because we, even if it's just to, to buy the uh, local um, and revered cola nut, the OG, uh -huh. just launch an OG here as part of this bazaar. Those who are Catholics or Anglicans or Methodists or, will know what the bazaar is. You know, it's when the church would uh, ask members to bring goods, you know, they could bring farm items, whatever it is, and donate for the church to auction to members of the church and the public. They use these monies to fund church projects like uh, giving, you know, charity to the poor uh, and all that. So uh, Peter B insisted he wasn't going to donate any money, uh, but that he would later, you know, he would like to see the project that the father was talking about, the priest was talking about. After seeing the project, then he would know uh, what to do. Uh, so Father Mbaka wasn't having it, and he said, um, if you're going on like this, I can tell you that uh, this forthcoming election, you will not win. You won't win. You have to do this one, because there's a word that God has given me. And um, that, that indeed was what he said. You would win the election because you refused to, um, uh, to, to support the work of God, to give to God. Now, Peter B. had said, I'm a fundamental Catholic, and uh, I, I believe in giving and all that. Um, so, but for the clip that, that surfaced yesterday, Fernand Baca was, uh, was quoted, was heard saying, it is now that Atiku Abubakar is contesting for, for president. Now that he is contesting without Peter B, it is now that he is serious, is what he was heard saying in the footage. Uh, we want somebody that is serious, unless Peter B comes here, that's to the adoration ground, to kneel. If he becomes president, I'll close on his ministry. He's going nowhere. Uh, Mbaka is saying that Obi would have to come apologize or kneel so that what he said will be reversed. But for now, uh, Obi will not become president of Nigeria. The clip was first posted by uh, um, an online medium. Anyway, so, uh, you know, that, that it uh, remains to be seen if um, Father Mbaka's uh, uh, a prophecy or curse uh, of Peter Obi that he will never smell the presidency as president or vice president uh, will come true or if um, Peter B. would close down Father Mbaka's ministry, because Mbaka has promised that he would have to leave, uh, shut down the ministry, Peter B. becomes president. Time will tell. But indeed, his prophecy that uh, uh, Atiku will not be president if he sticks with um, Peter B. came true. But there are different aspects to this, this particular conversation. Um, for instance, you look at the fact of the prophecy uh, and whether that is still at work in Peter B.'s life. But also, the fact that, you know, with a clamor for the Southeast to produce the next president, this is um, someone who has the best chance uh, of a Southeast candidate to be president. And uh, you have his own fellow brother, who is also from the Southeast, uh, attacking him. Uh, so maybe lending credits to the widely held view that uh, our brothers and sisters from the Southeast do not know how to come together to actualize their aim of producing Nigeria's next uh, uh, president. Now, fast forward, um, Bianco Joku, the uh, wife of late uh, leader of Biafra, uh, Dim Chiku Emeka Joku, is also the founder of the Abga Party. Um, she released a, um, a statement d detailing her experience with Peter B in Dallas, United States of America, uh, where uh, the Igbo leader, um, late Ojuku, was uh, attending to his health. And uh, she put out a long statement, but the summary of this is that, um, as she says, indeed, Peter B is a, is a humble person. He's not stingy, but he rather uh, tries to spend on what is necessary so he can not uh, waste money that could be used for the betterment of other lives. Uh, this was um, in 2009 when Peter B was invited to speak at a conference in Dallas, Texas. Uh, he came to see Ojuku, bringing a message of um, goodwill from Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, who was Nigerian president at the time, uh, Obi came with a very small uh, a bag, you know, and Nabiaka said she was surprised he came with just one small bag. When she saw him, uh, because he decided to stay where they were staying in their house and to freshen up there, she said when she saw him unpacking his things, she saw there was only one casual cloth there, and she said, oh, uh, Peter, you're not going to be able to talk to these people uh, at this, um, uh, this event that you're a special guest of honor. 
Uh, you look at the caliber of guests expected at that event, including people like the mayor of Dallas, senators, captains of conglomerates, and all that. You need to go get a proper dress and appear in top form. These are words. Uh, so they managed to find their way to uh, uh, a clothes store where they got a, a um, Tom Ford outfit costing $3,900. Um, Obi refused it. He said that uh, it was um, overpriced and decided to go for a uh, cheaper outfit that cost about $220. Um, this is what she said Obi did. Now, on his way to the airport after his activities in Dallas, Texas, he took, a, took out an envelope of crisp $100 bills and gave them $3,800. He said, this is the balance of uh, the money I would have used to buy the suit. Please, um, Mr. and Mrs. Ojuku, use this money for your foundation. Use it for your foundation. I give it to the poor and the needy. Um, it would be better for me to use this money for this than to use it to buy a suit. And of course, she detailed those who benefited from the money. Uh, Bianca Ojuku mentioned the names of people who indigent, poor, had some very, very uh, difficult situation and were able to benefit from that money. Interesting one. And of course, yesterday, Bianca Ojuku was trending on Twitter um, for obvious reasons. Well, the Catholic Diocese of Enugu released a statement, a letter that uh, was shared on social media. That's where everything pops up these days. Um, and of course, in that uh, statement, they condemned and dissociated uh, themselves from the political utterances of uh, Reverend Father A.J.K. Mbaka against uh, Peter B. Labour Party presidential candidate. Uh, the diocese described Mbaka's utterances against Obi as unbecoming and divisive. Indeed, in that, in, the, in Mbaka's um, um, sermon or what he said, he, he had had to apologize for what he did in 2018. Um, he had, had to give an, uh, a public apology. It's, it was recorded. It's all over the internet. Now, Yesterday, what he was seen saying on that clip was that his apology was not genuine. He said he only did it under duress because the bishop of Federico Diocese uh, made him apologize, but he didn't mean it. You know, so the statement, this one that you're looking at, signed by uh, the diocese's chancellor and secretary, um, the church, however, warned Mbaka to refrain from making further provocative prophecies or utterances capable of heating up uh, the polity. These are interesting times indeed. Uh, it's not the first time the, the Catholic Diocese of Inigo has had to do something about Umbaka. Like I said, he had to apologize in 2018, December, uh, to Peter B. after he had tried to make him um, uh, make a donation to the project of the Adoration Ministry. Uh, he has previously also there been attempts to uh, relocate him, move him out of Inugu uh, by the bishop, and that was resisted by his, his uh, disciples and followers. Staunchly, he has a, quite a, a huge number of followers in Edugu and indeed the Southeast, and the church had to, um, to bend to their will. All right, uh, well, that's the latest <laughs> as far as it's concerned. Um, uh, you know, people reacting, some people sharing pictures online of uh, Obi meeting with the Pope, uh, Pope Francis, indeed, and uh, uh, saying that uh, Obi knows the Pope, so Fadambaka should realize uh, the kind of um, tale he's stepping on. <laughs> uh, another picture I saw. Of Peter will be given a hundred million naira to uh, School of Nursing and Midwifery uh, owned by the Catholic Church. Um, and this was shared by his followers to say, hey, he's no stingy man. But uh, and a funny part of this is, you know, it's seen the resurrection of the Stingy Men Association, you know, <laughs> trend on social media. Uh, people have gone back to dig up uh, some of the ID cards uh, that were shared on social media a year or two ago when it trended last to say, um, you know what, um, uh, Obi is the uh, chief patron of the Stingy Men Association. There you can see, you know, uh, pictures of him giving laptops to schools. He does this to schools all over the country, north, south, east, and west. Gives them um, scholarships, money for them to, you know, re renovate the school and pay for fees. He does that. But what people are saying is Obi will only fund projects, only fund projects that have an impact on lives, not projects he doesn't know about or he doesn't know where the money is going to. Indeed, when he gave that envelope containing uh, dollar bills amounting to $3,800 uh, to Bianca and Peter and uh, Chukwemeka Ojuku, he said that I believe you would use this money for what I have asked you to use it for. So it seems that he is a man who always wants the money spent to go for useful purposes and not to go to private pockets. And that may uh, explain why he wanted Mbaka to show him 
the project he was talking about. All right, um, social media um, user, he's a problem on Twitter uh, for his advocacy regarding NSAS. Uh, we're talking about um, Segalink. That's what he's known as. Um, well, he has um, put out a tweet and uh, a lot of people came out uh, attacking him. He's not the first person to raise this issue about the supporters of Peter B on social media. The supporters of Peter B on social media. Now, this is what um, he put out. Uh, this is what Segalink put out. Put out. Um, he says, a quote, a point proven, dead on arrival. This is not the future of Nigeria. Abuse will not be reinforced as, as a culture. Citizens have the right um, to be different and the right to choose without coercion. Shun the extremist assembly. Nigeria deserves better. He put a hashtag there. Shun extremism, UK in Nigeria. In Nigeria, he mentioned the uh, British High Commission to Nigeria. Also shared a picture of social media, different social media posts, and uh, somebody feeling uh, hurt. They say, words scar, rumors destroy, bullies kill. Uh, he now continued with a thread. He says, uh, His Excellency Peter B, your supporters, um, your supporters have made social media extremely unsafe for citizens, uh, he says. Mentally unsafe for citizens expressing their constitutional rights of freedom of expression with cyberbullying, uh, targeted harassment, threat to life, and blackmail. This is your brand. Uh, this is your brand to... This is your brand experience to most now. All right, this means this is what people are experiencing from your supporters. And this, when they think about you on social media, that's what comes to mind. There's Nigerians will not be cowered by the recently activated cyber terror cells uh, that is threatening uh, to make our election unsafe and put the lives of others in harm's way. This is against the country's Cyber Crime Act 2015, Part 3, Sub 18, highlighting cyber terrorism. Says the Nigerian authorities should also be aware of the ongoing cyber terrorism being unleashed on citizens by Peter B fans with untold extremism, which may escalate uh, and further exacerbate our fragile policy. This is unhealthy, unhealthy and immediate action must be taken. Um, and of course, I'm sure he's also reacting to the recently NICTA uh, bill that was um, recently released or guidelines released by the Nigerian uh, Information Technology Development Agency. Um, to try and regulate social media, uh, sort of, uh, you know, guidelines for the social media place. Now, what I think, what I think, and um, this is my honest opinion, um, in, 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 the, in the struggle to ensure that, that IPOB, you know, actualizes its aims, the group embarked online and its supporters, you know, actively on a campaign of misinformation. Now, this segment, this, this is not all of Peter B's supporters, but this segment of people on the internet who were pushing, I'm a recipient, I'm a journalist, and I, I can show you, you know, communication things sent to my DM by people who are uh, saying they were acting on behalf of IPB, several of them on social media. These people jumped on the NSAS campaign. I have proof that <laughs> they jumped, and now they've jumped on the OB train. Now, there are a lot of supporters of Peter B on social media who are you know, orderly, who have a gentle conduct, but we have a segment, and I can prove that you can trace these people uh, to the IPUB agitation. The man himself, you know, has been worried, and he's put out statements begging them, begging them to please be calm. There are several Nigerians who want to change, but this is not how it's done, and what they're doing stands to bring a damage to the good cause that Peter B has, and prospects of that cause because people who feel hurt and walk away and might decide to withhold their vote all right a word to the wise is enough we have to go that's the trending segment on plus tv africa the breakfast i'll be back with more please stay with us